plant friends! Welcome to my new Zoom background slash uh, YouTube plant tube background. And it's actually a repurposed element of my wedding, which is what we're gonna talk about today. Bloom and grow, YouTube show. I have to say, I'm like dying for this sign. Um, but this actually was the green wall that we had at our wedding instead of a photo booth. We're gonna talk about it later in the video, but I repurposed it and installed it in my office and I'm pretty obsessed <laughs> with it. But anyway, plan friends, I finally got married <laughs> last month. If you followed me on social media, you know I was a COVID bride, we were a COVID couple, and wedding planning was kind of a nightmare. Um, we had three wedding dates, two postponements. We were originally supposed to get married in Labor Day of 2020. Um, and the whole wedding planning process, I honestly wouldn't wish on my worst <laughs> enemy. However, the thing that kept me and Billy going throughout the whole process was number one, from the minute we got engaged, I knew that I wanted to have the plantiest wedding ever. <laughs> I knew that I wanted to incorporate plants and house plants into our wedding in unique, interesting ways. And I was already excited to share all of the thoughts that I had been having with you guys. And also Billy and I ended up getting married at Tanglewood um, Music Center, which is in the Berkshires in Massachusetts. And it's where we met when we were 15. We ended up being the first wedding to take place at Seiji Ozawa Hall, which is a really famous hall on the Tanglewood Musical Center property and Billy and I sang there together when we were 15. So we held out and we didn't elope because we really wanted to get married um, on that property with all of our people. And also like I just had all these planty ideas that I really wanted to do. So December we're celebrating the Botanically Inspired Wedding Series or the Planty Wedding Series on Bloom and Grow Media. Um, but there's going to be three episodes in December on the Bloom and Grow Radio podcast. And this week the episode is 26 different ways that you can incorporate houseplants into your wedding. So that's too long for a YouTube video. So I'm bringing you eight. <laughs> so go listen to the podcast episode if this video piques your interest. We've got 26 different different ways with my wedding planner on the podcast this week, but I selected eight of my absolute favorite ways that we incorporated my passion for plants into our wedding in what I think was a very elevated, sophisticated way. We didn't have a houseplant themed wedding, but we had a botanically inspired wedding um, that I wanted to break down for you guys with pictures. We're still waiting on the video. Maybe you can incorporate some of these design elements and ideas into your special day as well. Please let me know in the comments if you end up using them or if you have any botanically inspired event ideas or themes that you wanna share. Um, and make sure to like and subscribe the video if you're, if you're excited. So I don't know why I'm like almost a little emotional <laughs> to finally tell you guys this. We planned our wedding for two years. So it's like, I've been like dreaming of making this video for our community for a long time, but let's begin. So here are eight ways to incorporate house plants or plants into your wedding in fun ways that will make you smile on your day. Okay, so of the attire, I knew that I wanted a planty wedding dress. Um, I had all sorts of ideas on my Pinterest board what my wedding dress was gonna be like, and it's really funny that my wedding dress ended up being the polar opposite style of what I was thinking. I got really attached to the idea of having a two-piece wedding dress, so like a really sexy wedding dress with like a skirt on top of it, and then the moment I put this dress on, it was over. So <laughs> I went to all the wedding dress shops in New York City, all the really fun, fancy, cool ones, and I loved my experience with Beholden. I'm so proud to be a beholden bride. Um, they're the line under anthropology. And so I ended up, ironically, my gown, the name of it was called Harmony, which I think is so funny because Harmony is a musical term and we got married at Tanglewood Musical Music Center. So I kind of thought it was kind of a, a note from the universe that this was right. But this dress had really beautiful lace appliques that were very planty. Um, I was open to having a colorful dress. I was open to having like, you know, green throughout the dress. It didn't happen, but it was kind of this like muted champagne color. Um, and man, that full skirt was so dreamy and amazing the day of. Billy joked with me, all I wanted to do was like twirl around in the skirt all day. Um, we had a very formal first dance as well, so that like really looked pretty epic for our ballroom dance. But anyway, thank you Beholden for making amazing dresses. So fun that I got to be a Beholden bride. The next thing I wanted to talk about was my bridal party situation. I knew that I wanted planty bridal party dresses. I had eight bridesmaids and one bridesman. Um, 
I knew that I wanted to do some sort of palette and where I was struggling was every planty dress that I saw, I felt like the print would be way too busy on everyone. I had a huge bridal party, nine people. Um, so I ended up doing like a really cool mix and match palette. Um, I was in love with this pattern that I think is still being sold now by Revelry. Um, it's this light pink pattern, super romantic and soft, um, that has plants in it. And then I actually went to Birdie Gray, which is a separate bridesmaid um, dress place, and I matched the colors of the pattern, of the floral pattern, and I made a little palette of, for my bridesmaids. So we had crimson, mauve, light pink, um, and then this three girls in the, in the planty pattern. And I really, like, I was really nervous two days before the wedding. I had never done something like this before. I feel like you see on Pinterest all of these beautifully curated bridesmaid palettes, brides people palettes, um, and I just like was super nervous I was gonna mess it up and it wasn't actually gonna look good. But I have to say, I mean, I thought I had the best looking bridal party ever. Um, so good looking. Kyle, my bridesman, found like this gorgeous kind of crimson suit to kind of fold in with the, the burgundy dress. Um, and it really just looked so amazing. So if you wanted to incorporate plants into your bridal party, incorporating some sort of element of a planty pattern in your party in some capacity is awesome. The other cool thing that I thought that they made is you can just get ties, like if you have groomsmen or bridesmen, um, or if you're a groom, um, or if you're wearing a suit and you're looking for a tie to your wedding, um, you could do uh, like a tie that has a planty pattern. So I know Revelry has ties. Um, you could also do a pocket square, you could do floral um, suspender. So there's all these really interesting ways that you could have like a glimpse of planty in it, right? Um, another thing I did was, okay, this is a ninth, I guess. I wasn't gonna talk about this, but my shoes were emerald green. And I thought that um, it was kind of a riff on something blue. So I had something green and they were my emerald green shoes. And I thought that that also brought like a really natural, fun kind of planty element. Cause obviously all the tropical foliage I love is emerald green. Um, and damn, it looked cool in photos. <laughs> The other way that I incorporated plants into the attire of the wedding was probably one of my favorite elements of, of how everything came out. So Beholden has an unbelievable line of um, all sorts of hair accessories that you can get on their website. And I ordered all of these planty pins from them and I, I over ordered, I ordered a lot of pins. We, we didn't end up using all of them, but my amazing hairstylist did this beautiful updo. I wanted like a very kind of whimsical, bohemian, classic, like all, all these juxtaposition of words. Um, but I ended up having an updo with like a lot of fishtail chunky braids that kind of like, I thought pretty elegantly like swept up in the back. And then she layered two different sets of pins, like a very lacy pin and then a floral like enamel pin. And she worked them from the right side of my head because uh, Billy and I stood this way. So I stood this way for my ceremony, if you were our guest. So you could see this pop right here. And then she combed, like she, she wove all of the pins all the way around the back of my head. It looked so cool. I really wanted to have a flower crown on our wedding day, but I felt like the flower crown and the planty dress was just too much. Like it would, it would just be too much in your face. Um, and I feel like these pins were just kind of an elevated way to incorporate flowers in my hair, but not have like a huge, you know, bohemian flower crown on with this like very elegant kind of corseted dress. Um, I did wear a flower crown to my rehearsal dinner though. <laughs> so I got my flower crown moment. Okay, so this was a really fun idea that I had that we ended up not doing, which was kind of a bummer. Last minute, we didn't realize that our venue didn't allow for this, but I thought a really fun riff on having a flower girl for a plant parent would be having a leaf girl. And the way that you would do that is, and by the way, my flower girl was gonna be my like third 30 year old best friend who was a bridesmaid. We were gonna make her be the leaf girl. But the thought was instead of throwing flower petals, she was gonna throw dried fern fronds. Um, and so I would have this, you know, 
pathway of dried fern fronds that I was gonna walk down. Sadly, we didn't end up doing it, but we did have the dried fern fronds. They, you see them all over our reception after. And a way that I thought that you could even up-level that to the next level, which I was gonna do and then cut when I found out we couldn't do this, was to actually propagate some of your houseplant collection, depending on how close you live to your wedding venue, and actually having, like, if you have a huge pothos, cut off a bunch of the vines, take the leaves off the vine and have those be what are thrown at your feet. Or even get one of those like confetti cutters and cut the leaves so you have like heart-shaped confetti cutouts of your leaves and have that end up being your confetti um, or what gets thrown, you know, by your flower girl or boy or flower granny. Like there's so many different trends now with flower girls. Um, but what I also realized is from a DIY perspective, I had a lot of ideas when I was planning my wedding that I was gonna do all sorts of DIY things. I was gonna grow my own flowers for my bouquet. I was gonna make flower crowns for all my bridesmaids. I was gonna do all this calligraphy on oysters with everybody's names, like for the, <laughs> I had a lot of crazy ideas. Pinterest makes you crazy <laughs> when you are planning a wedding. Um, so when it, when it came time to actually do the wedding, I had to cut some of the DIY thoughts that I thought I was gonna do because I was just so overwhelmed because you would really have to like cut the confetti or like deal with those leaves the day of your wedding so they didn't like shrivel. Um, but I think it's a great idea and if you ever do it at your wedding, please let me know and tag me on Instagram because I'd love to see how it came out because I think it's a really fun riff for a plant parent for a wedding. Okay, next up, is the saga and the epicness of the Hoya Hearts. If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen the Hoya Hearts and the whole kind of saga of it all. Um, I fully, I do not regret this. This was one of the favorite aspects of my wedding. I still am getting photos of some of our guests and the Hoya Hearts in their homes. It was unbelievable. From day one, I had this idea that I really wanted to do, but it was quite the undertaking. So, um, I had this idea that instead of giving succulents out, you know, succulents used to be super pop popular wedding favors, that I wanted to do potted Hoya hearts, Hoya Carii hearts, but I also wanted to make that dollar, like I wanted to make it stretch a little longer. So I thought, what if we made tablescapes featuring the Hoya hearts? And then at the end of the night, our guests could take the Hoya hearts home with them. So they're dual purposed and they live on forever. And maybe we could even keep a couple for our home too. This required a lot of planning. In last week's episode of Bloom and Grow Radio, I kind of dive into every aspect of how I got to the wedding day. Um, if you're interested in like really hearing the details, if you're interested in doing this for yourself, I, I suggest going and listening to that episode. But basically, I worked with my wedding planner and my florist to figure out how to execute this because the florist had to be brought into the conversation. Um, because the cool thing is, because we had these Hoya hearts on the table, we needed less flowers, um, which ends up being great for your budget. And then I worked with Little Prince of Oregon. They're a grower in Oregon. We spoke many month, for many months leading up to my wedding and got a shipping date for them to ship like over a hundred Hoya hearts to my house. And in my mind, I thought, ship it to me a couple of weeks ahead of time so I have time to repot and have them establish. But then what I realized is, oh, I have to keep these Hoya hearts like alive and in perfect condition and then drive them three hours to the Berkshires where my wedding was. So we received them, they were in great condition. Thank you, shout out to Little Prince of Oregon for working with me on this. I think we still have a discount code of theirs that works that we'll put in the show notes if it's still live. Um, we received the Hoya hearts and then it was like all about where are the Hoya hearts gonna go? What light am I gonna put them on and when we're gonna repop them? So Billy and I had a glass of wine one night. I think it took three hours um, of repotting on our balcony. Uh, shout out to Espoma, Espoma Organics. We used a huge bag of their potting mix um, repotting these Hoya hearts that came in two and four inch pots into four inch terracotta pots. Um, another note about terracotta, don't order it online. I ordered a bunch of terracotta online and it arrived, half of them were cracked and then I had to run around town finding finding more terracotta pots. But anyway, I thought that they came up, they came out great. So we potted them up. We had a really nice sunset potting up the Hoya hearts and then ended up packing my car. Billy went to the beer store and got like beer uh, cardboard boxes that we lined with Hoya hearts. And then we put the Hoya hearts in my car and then we took my car to my wedding. And then I brought my grow lights from 
New York to the Berkshires and set it up in my my parents Airbnb for these Hoya. It was such <laughs> it was such a thing. My mom kept joking. We had all the Hoya hearts and the grow lights set up in a corner of the Airbnb kitchen and she kept calling it the nursery, like where the children are sleeping. Um, but then they got picked up and beautifully incorporated into our tablescape. This leads me to the next way that you can incorporate plants into your into your wedding. So we did a riff on what's really popular right now, which is like garlands of like eucalyptus or like um, all sorts of greenery that can get really expensive. And also it's like super popular. So what we did instead is instead of doing garlands, we did table runners of palm fronds. So if you see in these photos, um, our florist was amazing. She took all sorts of tropical houseplant leaves that were flat and she ran them down the table so she didn't have to make garlands. She just ran the um, palm fronds down the table, which looked amazing against a white tablecloth. And then on top of that, they put a few bud vases with different tropical leaves in them and a couple flowers that kind of tied into the color scheme of my bouquet. And then put the Hoya hearts like all kind of around at each place, um, place setting. And then one other thing is we wanted to make sure that people understood that they had to take the Hoya hearts home with them. So we got um, the printed menus that we had. We worked with an unbelievable illustrator on our wedding invitations and she did an illustration of the Hoya heart in a pot. So that was at the top of the wedding menu. And then under it said, take home a piece of our hearts and something like this is a Hoya carii, Maria's favorite plant, please take it home, at, you know, in memory of the wedding or something. Um, which was great because we didn't have any leftovers. So all the guests took the plants home, which was awesome. But I really loved, I thought that table runner idea was like a super cool kind of modern take on house plants and runners and greenery. Um, and you know, with, with our florals, like most of our floral budget got spent on like greenery and you know, my bouquet obviously, but like we had flowers, but it was very leaf heavy and I absolutely loved it. Okay. So number seven, and I know that I said that this was gonna be eight, but I've definitely given more than eight here, so enjoy. Um, use a green wall instead of a photo booth. So we decided not to have a photo booth, the traditional photo booth where like there's a photographer and you like have all the funny things. Instead, we just did like a really epic photographable moment for our guests. So my wedding planner, Katie, of Katie Did Events, she's linked below, she's amazing, and she's who's my guest on the 26 Ways to Incorporate Houseplants podcast episode, Katie assembled this green wall. And the fun thing about the green wall is the green wall was this epic moment. It had a custom sign that said the Morrissey's. Katie put all of these cool fans and she actually had the florist bring extra um, flowers and leaves that they tucked into the, the green wall for the day of the wedding. People got to take their selfies there. They got to take their photos there. Then, this is actually three panels. Like she ordered all of this off of Amazon. It's broken down in the DIY episode from last week of the podcast if you're interested in doing it for yourself. But Billy was able to break the green wall down, put it in the back of my car and then reassemble it. And now it's my Zoom background. And I used the people who made that custom sign for our wedding and they actually were able to take my logo um, and turn my logo font into my background. So now I have Bloom and Grow. And I love it. And every day when I walk into my office, I'm like brought back to my wedding, which is so amazing. Like I'm obsessed. And then last but not least, okay, this was like low key. I think one of the coolest things at our wedding. <laughs> Um, Katie, my wedding planner, had the most clever idea. We had one signature cocktail for our, our happy hour and it was the Aperol Spritz because I'm an Abbey Spritz fiend. They're all I want to ever drink. Um, so Katie thought that instead of having normal signage, she got a faux aeroid leaf and then had Kara, the girl who did our invitations, do in calligraphy Aperol Spritz. And that was the sign for the signature cocktail on the bar. And Katie did a really good job at, she got a cup, some of them were real and some of them were faux leaves that she just put in bud vases and had them all over the bar, all over our memory table, all over our reception table. Um, but this kind of votive glass, um, little bud vase with leaves were like all over the place. And I just thought this Aperol spritz leaf was such a statement. I'm so sad <laughs> I didn't get it at the end of the wedding because I would have put that in our kitchen. Um, but yeah. 
So using plant leaves as signage could be really cool in so many different ways of a party. And that's not even a wedding, right? So a lot of these ideas, yes, they're for weddings, but you could use half of these ideas just like for your office decor, for any sort of life event that you have coming up, for a birthday party, for anything. So I hope that this was fun. Um, this wedding series feels like a little vulnerable for me because I feel like normally most of my interviews on Bloom and Grow and most of the content I make is like me interviewing someone else and about their stuff. And this is just like a very intimate look in, you know, one of the most intimate special days of your life. Um, but man, having plants as a big part of my wedding was a huge goal. Um, I'm so thankful to Katie, my wedding planner, who really helped me kind of like refine and peel back and like elevate uh, this thought of, of incorporating houseplants, but not having a houseplant themed wedding, having a botanically inspired wedding. Those are two very different things that we worked very hard to like toe that line. Um, but it was really fun and really just like really one of the most special days ever. We waited an extra 11 months to get married because of all of our postponements and it was 100% worth the wait. And if you want more planty content, we have a whole series on the Bloom and Grow Radio podcast. So go subscribe. We've got DIY projects. We've got this episode, 26 Ways. And then next week we have a really amazing episode with my florist on a wedding flower crash course, which is gonna be really fun. Everything's linked below, including the blog of the 26 things if you want more. Uh, and I hope that you enjoyed it. And until next time, my sweet plant friends, keep blooming and keep growing. <laughs>